Ooh, 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 ooh. He's the guy I would immediately hate. I would just not take to at all. I just, I don't like those type of guys, but I knew he'd be fun to play. And he was written, you know, he was written so, you know, in such a funny uh, manner that I, I knew it was gonna be a class. Then I read through the script and I thought it was just really, really great. And it was so, it, it's, it has such a, a strong feel, uh, a strong connection to the first one, but it, you know, oddly enough, it's not anything like the first one. First meet Duke in the film. He is doing that. He's, he's, he's putting on this, you know, this big charade that he lives in this you know, gorgeous mansion with his cars, and he's just living the high life, um, selling his supplements, and he's just not that at all. You meet him, and he's actually in a, in a garage. It's kind of he's kind of busted, and he's living at home with his mom. So that, like everything about him is just false. But he's trying to you know put on that persona that he's you know, a successful person. Just you know, again, to the Ryan if he wanted me to take a look at this person that person and he said no you really wanted to you know you wanted to, to you know kind of have that feel but he didn't want to dive too much into it because he wanted to make the character still be you know somewhat like it was got to have some redeeming qualities and um, so I didn't I didn't model myself or my character after anyone I just kind of you know read was on page I took direction from Ryan and kind of had fun with it you know, and bounced off of my mind. Most direction I get from directors is to speak up because I'm a soft-spoken person and with characters like uh, Duke who's a bigger personality um, I just constantly had to raise my voice and be bigger than I am um, and kind of be aware of that because I want to do play every character I do very subtly and very soft-spoken it's just my nature but sometimes I just had to come out of my shell and be very big and boisterous with that too. so that was that was the thing it's just amplify, amplify myself and that's what I mean that's what I did He's loud and obnoxious. Ed Norton, for example, has been like one of my favorite actors for a very long time. Um, he is such a mild-mannered person. But when he starts performing, you would think that he had like 50 cups of coffee. He is just amped up and he's so intense. And every and he, and, and he puts a lot of pressure on himself because he will, I love that, uh, watching uh, Ed because he's so interesting. But if he feels wrong about something, he will just, you know, start all over. And it's like a very intense. Uh, so there, you know, with more than a few uh, actors uh, on the set, there were a lot of times where us, as a cast, were just, uh, watching our peers do their thing and getting like really engaged and really wrapped up in it. And when, and when uh, you know, Ryan yelled cut, I mean, there was a lot of clapping going on because that's when like people, uh, especially Ed, like Ed was just so intense in his performance. It was really kind of mesmerizing to watch. You know, but then you understand why he's like, <laughs> Watch him, you know, do his thing in Bond, and then watch him uh, play Benoit Blanc. It's just such. I mean, they couldn't be on any more opposite ends of the spectrum as far as characters go. But to see him uh, perform as Benoit Blanc so effortlessly, it's just, it's kind of mind blowing. Madeline was, um, she was amazing. She was sweet, and she was, uh, and we buddied it up a lot, we chopped it up a lot, and just kind of talked about everything other than, than work, and because she, she got into this business a really, you know, a, a really cool manner. I don't think she, you know, set out to be a movie star. I don't think she set out to be, I think she just was interested, she fell in love with it, and she pursued it, you know, which is kind of what I did. I, by mistake, you know, by accident, I, I stumbled into it, and I just became obsessed with it. And so, uh, again, I'm just really curious to see where her setting uh, so not only did we get to perform together but we also got had a lot of time to socialize and that's like that's what I love the most is because you when you really get to know people and again you know, kind of feel comfortable with them 
and it just, uh, I feel like we're all, we all start to click and start to collaborate, and that's where the real chemistry is. What I do love about Ryan um, is that he runs a no-pressure set. There's absolutely zero pressure. He makes you feel completely comfortable. There's a lot of laughs to be had. And you never, I've never seen Ryan in anything other than just a really pleasant mood. And so it just, you know, it all starts from, it starts from the top and it trickles down. And if your director is a, is a great guy and he's in a good mood, he, he just, you know, it's, it leads off and everybody's in a good mood, having fun. So I think that's it more than anything, Ryan. It's just, it's just fun. focused on the Duke, and I think the reason they were my favorite is because I got to watch uh, other actors work. You know, everybody's just so interesting, so talented. Everything that um, Jessica Wood does, it's interesting. She has a particular way of just stealing moments, and she, and she, I think she's aware of it. I think she knows that it's a strength of hers, but if she's not you know, speaking in a scene, if she's just kind of background in the scene, she will find a way to make you look at her because she's just an interesting performer. And she has all these little quirky, uh, quirky things that she does uh, uh, in a film that I think people, you know, will, their eyes will be drawn towards her.